I think one of the things that, that really has happened is that productivity uh, has actually gone up, not down. People's commute times obviously are almost non-existent. So our senior leaders really have spent more time during the crisis because they couldn't travel. They spent more time during the crisis on virtual calls with teams, less time in security lines, and therefore felt both more productive and also more connected with the organization. Everybody fits in the Zoom room. They can all ask questions. It feels much more intimate and the whole leadership team can be there. We are having much more efficient discussions and we're doing a better job of making every, sure everybody gets hurt because we're all forced to live in the same frame. Only to see now that we can actually bring down the number of layers uh, in an organization. And it's coming from a more project-based way of work. So you take away some of the kind of uh, um, traditional silos and hierarch hierarchical ways of work into much more cross-functional uh, project way of working. So, so this changes the, basically the way you operate. And that's the main benefit out of, of the whole work from home uh, concept. Over time, you realize that there's something missing for the way of collaboration to see each other, um, to sit together in a room, to see mimic, to see how people react to, to whatever you say, how you propose it. And, and, and that's something where we want to get back to. The world could go uh, remote. But as things stand, with the current constraints in terms of technology, we believe office will still be helpful for people to learn and you know collaborate particularly when it comes to strategic topics or innovation it's still easier uh, you know particularly in a brains business where a lot of you know new innovative ideas and innovation act happens when you bash great brains together and that brainstorming creates those new ideas uh, it's still difficult right uh, it's still difficult uh, to do that in front of a uh, just a camera when we onboard new employees now we're really thinking there we want to be very planful about bringing people into onto sites, even if they start from somewhere else, and really make sure that they have a good onboarding, that they meet with lots of people. Maybe it's all the HR people come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then you collaborate that way, or finance, or whatever. And then you're going to have a core of people who we kind of call the anchor people that will be in the office most days because they need to be. And then you'll have some people that may never come in the office. So we have a lot of you know different personas, as we call them, depending on the work that you do and where you're located. The old way is where you come in, you clock your time, you work your time and you leave again. Of course, we have ways to give people tasks, to fulfill the task within that time. But if you hand over the responsibility to people to say, by tomorrow we want to have that strategy done or by next week, and then you leave it up to them, how they most effectively use their time, how much they concentrate, how much they chat with colleagues, how much they work on their own, how much collaboration they need, So, for example, if you are a first-line manager, how do you manage an underperformer who may be sitting at home, right? How do you induct a new joiner? How do you ensure that they are provided with the right kind of opportunities, mentored so that they can grow? How do you manage them through that, through that process? We even more actively need to communicate, but more intentionally need to communicate and need to tell people this is our common strategy. This is what I expect from you and your team. By that time, do you understand what I'm, what I'm expecting? And what we clearly see the biggest change is that um, a majority of people, over 70% now, would prefer a more flexible work model with one or two days per week, at least at home, as opposed to Pre-COVID, it was exactly the other way around. So, so that really changed dramatically. If at all, one could see, say, this pandemic has had also some 
or lessons learned, then of course it had it speeded up a lot of uh, ways of thinking about how to work with each other and how flexible work models can look like. And to preserve that and develop that in the future is is our main task.